Welcome to Behave Yourself, the podcast that aims to bring the science of human behavior and how you can apply it to your own life and become the happiest, healthiest, and most successful version of you. We're two behavior analysts with backgrounds in personal training and nutrition who struggled in the past with confidence, weight loss, breaking promises to ourselves, and constantly trying the quick fixes. We bring the science and show you how to apply it confidently and consistently towards your own goals and how to actually create a lifestyle change. Behavior analysis is the science of human behavior, and we all engage in behaviors that either move us towards the direction of our goals or hold us back from living the life we desire. I'm one of your hosts, Emily McRae. And I'm your other host, Joe Wesley. How you doing? I'm well. How are you? I am well, but I have decided that we are no longer going to ask each other how we are doing. I have a number of Israeli aunties, and when you ask, when they ask you how you're doing, and you go, "I'm fine," their typical answer is, "For why are you saying you are fine? You are clearly not fine, Joanna. You have dark circles under your eyes, and you are too thin." <laughs> so either we are going to ask each other how we're doing and be honest, mm-hmm. or we're going to scrap this entirely because we both say I'm fine and we don't need that airtime. I like this. Honesty right. or just go straight in with how we're behaving. I say we go honesty. Okay. That's what we've come here to do, right? <laughs> be honest, be real. Sunday morning in Boston. How are you doing, Emily? Sunday morning, I am more awake now than when my alarm went off, but I was a bit frustrated when I had a last minute cancellation of a client, but then I worked on all of the podcast stuff and was definitely more, more amped to record this episode. So I'm doing better now. We've had a nice little discussion in the before recording. So I'm ready to go. I'm excited, excited about this and I'm motivated about this Mm, episode. Good link. (laughs) Always tying it in. How are you? I am going to be honest. I have had a rubbish week. My dad has been in hospital. I had to go by ambulance, which is quite a fourth a feat during COVID times. And the paramedics were wearing masks, and my mom couldn't go with him. And um, we in the UK have submitted a big application to progress ABA, but have a lot had a lot of the aunties come out and attack us it has been a week so I am feeling a little bit bruised and battered this week um but I'm I am I don't want to say I'm fine I am fine and actually Mm -hmm. mm, the me that was me 10 years ago would be a lot more bruised and battered than the me today so I'm hardy and I'm patting myself on the back (laughs) for being hardy good what is hardy to you guys I don't know we don't use that tough tough stuff okay yeah got it Pat myself on the back for that. And have you been behaving yourself this week? I have been behaving myself. Certain things have been more of a struggle than others in terms of it. Actually, honestly, veggie wise, I did okay this week, even with our group accountability, but it wasn't the most amazing week of eating, but I have been taking my vitamins morning and night, which is a huge hurdle. And I now have them in my bathroom near my contact case because I take my contacts out at night. So I take my nightly vitamins at night when I take them out. And then in the morning, when I put them in, I take my vitamins and I have a little token checklist. Oh, she's got her little vitamins out. I sit at my desk to eat my lunch. And so I have them Mm. sitting on my desk in individual pots. So I eat my lunch. I take my vitamins. Perfect. Yeah. I have um, minor (laughs) minor shot glasses because we don't use shot glasses for what they're used for. (laughs) So they're in shot glasses, but maybe I could get little containers for them, but they work. So, and I don't have to open anything. It's just super easy to grab it and take my vitamins. So I have been consistent with that. Nice. Good work. How have you been behaving yourself? Uh, Well, again, I haven't really been behaving myself. Um, Again, the old me used to classify foods as uh, red, amber and green foods. So I've talked more about this um, on my Instagram. And um, if you go and find the food of a bowl of um, roasted pecan nuts, pecan, pecan, can never say it right. Uh, (laughs) I go more into this then. But yeah, I ate a huge number of these maple roasted pecan nuts this week. And 
the past me would have now classified those foods as red foods. So foods I can't keep in the house because I can't control myself around. But I had been behaving myself well because as soon as I ate this ginormous pile of maple roasted nuts and I ate all of them, I then went back immediately and made some more intentionally so I could um, do some mindful eating practices around it. Mm. And this is something I do a lot with my clients of teaching them how to mindfully eat. And we have probably a kilogram of chocolate in the house and we probably have 20 different cereal bars and granola and all the foods that I used to classify as red we now have loads of in the house and I I don't even think about it I don't I know that they're there but I certainly doesn't preoccupy me mm-hmm. and these maple roasted nuts now I would like to be able to keep in the house and not even think about it and have a handful here or there but not concern myself with it. and definitely I don't want to ever have to have um like traffic light foods or red foods that I cannot have in the house because I can't mm-hmm. control so I'm not haven't made myself in some ways but I am now working on becoming better behaved by working on mindfulness around these very delicious nuts. That's awesome. <laughs> I a hundred percent need to do some more work on that. I for sure have foods that I don't keep in the house or buy. And I'm the only one who grocery shops right now. And I just, there's things I don't buy, but now I can buy Cheez-Its and Tom will eat the Cheez-Its, but I don't have any desire. I'll maybe have one or two and then realize that I don't really want them, but we could hammer a whole box of Cheez-Its in one sitting together and be what just are fine. Cheez-Its? What are Cheez-Its? Oh man, <laughs> I'm going to have to mail you some Cheez-Its. <laughs> I'll mail you, I'll mail you a box of Cheez-Its for Christmas hey, present. Cheetos? Different. They're more cracker-like and, but they're not there's different flavors. So there's different multiple cheese flavors. There's like toasty, there's whole grain, there's giant cheese. It's they're Yeah. They're good. Cheese crackers. They're kind of like crackers. Okay. They're in the cracker family category. I'm going to send you some cheese. It's mm, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how they will fare with international travel, whether they'll still be in one piece when they get here. No, they'll, they last a while. They're not fresh. They're very processed. They're nothing healthy, mm. but it's something that I used to not be able to really like keep in the house. And now I, now I can. Yeah. Binge eating is definitely something that I've struggled with. It's not necessarily something I'm an expert in, but it's definitely something I work through with clients doing a lot of mindful eating exercises and practices and teaching them how to. Um, So if anyone wants help with that, by all means, get in touch. Um, And also nicely links into next week in the coming weeks, we're going to be doing a series on weight loss, um, shamefully timed with the new year and the first of January, because let's face it, a lot of people will be trying to lose weight in the new year. Um, Mm -hmm. So maybe we could go into a little bit of um, control around food and mindful eating then, but we have gone off on a massive tangent. Let's get to the topic. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm just not motivated. Was this a listener question? This is something that I get from every single client or potential training client that they are just not motivated to do X, Y, or Z. I don't have the motivation. I don't, I don't have my motive. I don't have motivation. And I always say motivation's not lying around on the ground, waiting for you to pick it up and use it. And that's always my number one phrase when somebody says I'm not motivated. So it's kind of, I think where it stemmed from. Yeah. So let's start off with definitions. I know that you've done Mm. some additional research into extra definitions. Shall I take the behavioral and you take the other definitions you found? Sure. Do you want to go first? So in terms of definitions of motivation, and it's interesting because motivation brings up this very, I don't know how to say it, kind of circular definition of motivation, which says like to be motivated. And I I don't really love that kind of the, the act of or process of motivating, but there was one definition where it was a motivating force, stimulus, or influence, which stimulus goes ding, ding, ding in a behavior Mm -hmm. analyst's mind. So I appreciated that definition of it, but there's this, it's a need or a desire to act upon some action or an incentive or a drive. Um, And I also 
kind of came across this concept of an MO in police work or any detective show, CSI, all those things yeah. where they say the the killer's MO and we have a different version of MO versus the police version of what is an MO. And to them, an MO is the modus operandi or a method of operation. So what the killer typically does or the burglar or robber, it doesn't have to be, but what the criminal does and what their kind of patterns of behavior look like. So in an example that I found was there was somebody who was only hitting lower levels because that had air conditioner units because they could remove the air conditioner units from the window and get in that way. Super creepy, weird, crimey stuff, mm. but that's the method of operation. So they find these patterns of behaviors of the criminals and that's how they determine, you know, is this the same criminal or not? So that's the more layman's terms, perspectives of MO, motivation, methods of operation. Behaviorally, what are we looking at? So behaviorally, we look at motivating operations or MOs, um, and an MO is an environmental variable, and it can either change the reinforcing effectiveness of a stimuli, so how much do we want the thing, or it can increase or decrease a particular behavior, how much we do that behavior. So depending on whether a motivating operation increases a behavior or decreases a behavior or increases how much we want something or decrease how much we want something, we'd either call it um, establishing or abolishing. Um, but with that's how we define it. Yeah. And so for our non-behavior analytic listeners, we typically give the example of food deprivation leading to a behavior altering effect of wanting to eat more food. So if you haven't eaten and it's now two o'clock, the reinforcing value of food is going to be much higher. After you eat that food at four o'clock, it's an abolishing operation. So you're not, that food is not going to be reinforcing to you anymore because you've already eaten the food. Yeah, totally. If you, another one would be, if you offer me um, wine at 7 a.m., I have no kind of MO for that. Um, I wouldn't say yes to it. If you offer me wine at 10, like 7 p.m., I'm quite likely to say yes. My MOs would change depending on what time. Also, if you hold up a bottle of $4 wine, I'm going to be saying no. If you offer me a bottle of $14 wine or $24 wine, I'm probably going to say yes. Mm -hmm. So some real life examples there. Yeah. Okay. But we can define this all we like. And yet people will stay, they still say to us, I have these big kind of goals, but I've just got no motivation to do them. So. We need some discipline. Yeah, maybe. And some structure. Or some structure. Maybe look at where you've picked your goals from. Mm -hmm. um so I guess sorry to flip around but maybe looking at first um where your goals have come from and why you really want to do it have you chosen the goal of losing weight only because it's January the 1st and everybody's doing it or maybe you've chosen the goal of having a um dry January so you're not going to drink alcohol for the whole of January because everyone's doing it but that's not within your current values and so are your goals, the behaviors that you're currently trying to do, are they really based on your own values or are they based on what you think you should do or you think someone else wants you to do and therefore you have no motivation? So maybe looking at what you're doing and the true reason of why you're doing it first. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's not to say that if you have, if your goals are valuable and you still struggle, there, there's still going to be that, that struggle of not feeling maybe some days like you want to do it or you want to, I don't know, get that extra, a high intensity workout in because you're just feeling so burnt out and beat down. And you're saying, well, yeah, it's value. Like working out is valuable to me. And I know that it's going to help me long-term, but there's going to be days where you're not going to feel like you're motivated to work out. Even if it's a valuable goal for you, there's going to be days where it's just going to feel 
really, really challenging. And that's a very big difference than, well, everyone else is doing this 30 day workout challenge thing that may be different in value to you than being consistently active. Yeah. And if we're taking that example, I think you have to consider that your biology will often work against you. Um, So whether it's a high intensity interval workout, like Emily suggested, your body doesn't want to do it. Like everything in your 